Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our 50 question Friday. So good to see all of you guys here this morning. And again, you're welcome to ask questions either in the chat or on the questions tab. And then I also have some questions from the internet. Um, anyway, let's get started this morning. If uh, you guys like to join me in that three breaths, go into the heart space. Just focusing your attention onto your physical heart, the light within the heart. Connecting that light with the light of the earth, bringing in that breath. And then connecting that light from within the heart to the light of creation, source, soul, creator, God. And then on the third breath, I like to just extend that light both up and down, becoming a column of light. and expanding. Awesome. All right, so our questions. Um, let me pull up some questions here. I was hoping you guys were all full of questions today. Um, somebody wanted me to talk about the dragon wand. Um, I have one here. So also somebody requested that I keep tools on hand. I don't have a dragon wand here. I have most other tools. Okay, so the dragon wands are very similar to the shaman wands, the, the newer ones. So the newer shaman wands and the newer, well, all the shaman wands and the newer dragon wands all use the regeneration cubit. Here's my original shaman wand. So this uses the regeneration uh, for the, the wand part and a golden fire infinity for the other part. Um, so basically the shaman's wands and the dragon wands are going to create a very similar field. And basically you can just imagine creating a bubble around something. So I've given like in the shaman wand webinar, I talk about how I had this hiatal hernia that I was dealing with for a number of years. And basically one day I laid down, I used the shaman's wand to create like this field, this bubble around that hiatal hernia, um, which is the stomach, which is just the whole situation, the emotions that were related to it, um, which is why it kept herniating was still emotion issues. And so as I was wanting that, and then I just let it go, I wasn't, you know, with using any of the regeneration tools or the golden fire tools, it's about creating the space, creating the field, and then letting it go and not trying to fix, to heal, to see things in a certain outcome from here. So part of this whole new paradigm of the energy work that we do, uh, which is why the regeneration and the golden fire are part of this, is because it is that higher soul connection and the surrendering is truly the surrendering. Um, so made the field around that hernia. I didn't think about it. I let it go. I surrendered. A couple minutes later, I sat up and that hernia was gone. And when I went to look for it, it's like I could never find it. It did pop in every once in a while, but it was not a constant thing and it was easier to clear every time it came in. Um, so that's kind of how you can work also with the dragon wand is that it creates fields. Now with the dragon wand, when you are creating that field, so let's say the shaman wand is actually the dragon wand. To me, I just create this larger field in front of me or around me. And as I move the wand with intent and I create this larger field, that field is where you work with the dragons. And um, it used to be the dragon wand, the, the prior dragon wand, was one that was made specifically for a person and had a very specific dragon that came in to work with that person. With the new dragon wand, it is creating that field kind of like the shaman wand does. And within that field is where we find the higher aspects, these higher aspects of the dragons. So basically any, any of them that 
want to work with you, that it is in your highest and best. They step in, they they start working with your soul, and then you start working with them. You can open up communications. You can ask for the healing, the clearing, um, you know, just all the general work that you would do with the dragon, which is pretty much unlimited. They're just a bunch of phenomenal beings. Um, let's see. Then... Another thing about the coil here or the wand is a lot of people will liken this to the, the golden fire wand. Even though they're both a twisted um, wand, they're not, they're not anything similar. Um, they just happen to have a spiral around them. Um, and then a question about talking about the fairy wands too. So the fairy wands. Again, I don't have a fairy wand here, but the fairy wands are... A smaller, lighter gauge tool that looks very similar to just the shaman wand part here in a lighter gauge, and it's just this piece, and it's on a lanyard. The fairy wands are made with the golden fire frequency, and um, so the golden fire is it's just a higher frequency than what the fairy wand used to be. Again, the fairy wand used to be made out of the sacred cubit the 144 megahertz. And then probably about two years ago, we started making them out of the golden fire. So the fairy wands are basically, when you're wearing the pendant, it's still doing the protection of your field because when we have any of those tools, especially that golden fire within our field, it is transforming electromagnetics, transforming dense energy, dense consciousness, all the stuff that the golden fire does. But it is also a really gentle, peaceful energy because the fae come through it, the fairies. So basically when I'm twisting the wire and I twist a whole length of wire at once for, for all the tools. So as I'm twisting this 46 foot long wire that's folded in half and I'm twisting this wire and I'm holding space, that's where we bring in the energetic templates, the etheric templates into the tools. The fairy wands is really super cool because the Fae just, they're just surrounding that whole thing. And it's just, it's really a cool sight and feeling of all the Fae that holds space for the fairy wands. Um, it's pretty super cool. So anyway, when you're using the fairy wand, um, basically you just have a, a connection with the Fae in that way. Um, let's see... Katrina is asking a question um, here about exchanges. Um, yeah, Katrina, please do send me an email and we can talk more about that. Um, so basically, we, we had just come out not too long ago with that regenerative heart pendant, which is very similar to the infinite light pendant. So I'll talk a little bit about these guys. Um, they're both the same cubits. You know, the the outside ring is the regeneration ring on both of these. The inside is the golden fire. Now, the silver golden fire infinity and the copper golden fire infinity are exactly the same energetics. It's just with the regeneration rings, this copper ring is different than the silver ring. When we first made the silver in the regeneration, it's just a lighter, cleaner, crisper energy. Um, it's just, it, it, it's, it's so much more when we have the regeneration in silver versus copper. But because of the price difference on these, so this silver, it's welded in. This copper, it's free floating, and we just put it on a lanyard and it hangs. This is the regenerative heart pendant. So this guy is like almost a third of the price of this solid silver piece. So a lot of people I've been recommending <clears throat> the regenerative heart pendant over the golden fire coil. Now, there's still a lot of people that test well for the golden fire coil. So the golden fire coil is one that <clears throat> it produces that toroidal field, kind of like your heart does, that, that tube torus. And so when you are wearing a coil, and actually I have on a silver coil prototype 
because I love my coils. Um, the coils are phenomenal. For me, when I first started wearing like the Harmony coil, which we no longer make, it allowed my feel to entrain with the Taurus of this to where a lot of the things that I used to do consciously became automatic. Um, it entrains your field for your field to become more automatic in a lot of the things that you do. For instance, I used to run energy into anything that I would consume, food, water. My food, I would run that love and that gratitude into the food all the way back throughout its entire life to everybody who handled it up until the point. That's what I would do with my food. When I started wearing a Harmony coil, which again, we no longer make the Harmony, we make the Gold of Fire now, but that Harmony coil entrained that into my field so that whenever anything comes into my field, that happens automatically. I don't have to sit and take the time to, to change the energetics of the food. I still give it gratitude. You know, when I sit down to a nice, beautiful meal, I still give my thanks and gratitude to it and those who prepared it you know, whoever that is. And, but yet it made all of the energy work automatic. So the coils too, the coil is also another one that when I would wear the coil, it, um, <clears throat> it aligns energy bodies. So it does really phenomenal things to entrain your field. So I wore my coil for about three weeks. Then I didn't need it because it entrained my field to be aligned, balanced and, and everything. So, um, coil is still phenomenal but yet a lot of people test better most people test better for the infinite light pendant this is the one for most people it's a powerful pendant but it's also expensive because of that solid silver so that's why we made the regenerative heart is because it is somewhere between these two now we used to talk about the gateway pendant and the coil. So the coil will keep you in this beautiful space. The gateway pendant pulls you out of there to where the things that were here affecting you, that this coil is preventing, that this coil is transforming so this stuff isn't affecting you anymore. The gateway pendant takes you up out of that space of where that stuff was affecting you. The gateway pendant is phenomenal and it helps you do the work of release where this guy is also doing the work of the release, the regenerative heart, but it is making things a little bit more simple and automatic. The gateway pendant is going to be bringing things up for you to see, to you to give gratitude to, and to release with a breath. This guy, the majority of that is going to just clear it automatically but it's still going to be bringing up the stuff so you'll still once in a while have to keep an eye on what's going on. When those things start to service, take the breath and release. Um, they're all very similar in the work that they do. Um, so another question, experiencing much bigger eye strain than normal when I place your Wi-Fi ring to my mobile phone, notebook, or regular PC monitor. Hmm. So somebody was saying that when they put on one of these, that they are getting a much bigger eye strain and pain. You know, and I don't know what to say about that, James, because um, with, yes, and you, and you do mention that, um, you would think that this would be the opposite of having the rings on your phone and it's causing that pain and eye strain. Um, you know, I would actually try it without anything. I mean, I would try just a ring itself and bringing that ring up and working with the eye because usually when you have a physical reaction with the tools, whether it is the emotional stuff, semi-physical, or just a actual physical pain. What our experience is, is that it is a healing, a shifting, a restructuring on the physical. And that's been our experience with any kind of pains, emotional, mental, physical, when we are using the tools, is that it is a clearing and a healing taking place. Um, 
So James, I'd recommend trying, um, you know, just a ring or whatever ring that you have without your phone and just seeing what that does to your field. I know like with my mom, she was wanting to have me design her a pair of glasses. We actually made, we actually have a mask, one of those sleeping masks that we were going to put the rings into, uh, just to have them close to her eyes at night for doing the work. Um, let's see. Can you share a way to use the devices for a meditation? Um, yeah, to use any of these tools for meditation, all of the fields of the tools that we create are helping to bring you more into the heart space, which is simply bringing you from that little ball of light, which we call your consciousness, your awareness, that usually sits right behind the pineal gland, sits right there in the middle of the brain, your consciousness. All the fields of these tools help to pull that consciousness back down into the sacred space of the heart, into the heart. So that in itself is to us the hugest thing of everything. Um, that's where you know your meditation should go. That's really what we see we should be in the heart space when we do anything, and especially meditation. That should be part of what we are doing through meditation is dropping into the heart space. So then we don't have all of the other stuff, the programs, the beliefs, the emotions, the, the experiences, all of that running and affecting the consciousness, rather moving the consciousness into the heart while we're in meditation. Um, but to use the tools in meditation, simply holding them over the heart is really a huge way because that is going to pull you into the heart. They're grounding, they're connecting, they're expanding, especially from the heart. Um, so, I mean, for just doing meditation, that's really the phenomenal way is just having the tools around. Now, we also have this big pyramid in the back, which we've done different meditations with, where we have you imagine stepping, in, stepping into that field and all the energetics come through as if you were standing in a large pyramid. So, I mean, that's another thing that you can do with the tools is you can actually just see a picture of the tools because they are all quantum tools. So when we see a picture or we have an intention, visualize it, we are accessing the actual tool because all the tools are in a quantum realm. These are all just physical anchors for the quantum tools. All right. So what else do we have? Um, Hey, Bloss, can you explain the difference in grounding with the Gaia sphere, golden fire versus the regeneration? So the two ways in grounding with the golden fire versus the regeneration, I only have a regeneration Gaia sphere here. Now, with, with the Gaia spheres in general, um, we call them the Gaia sphere because we see the energetics within the sphere the same as the energetics within the earth. So any way that you have a Gaia sphere, doesn't matter the frequency, they are automatically grounding you. Um, the golden fire is not as it's a different ground. So both because of the, the geometry, the spherical form, they're both going to be grounding. And that's the thing is they're both grounding, but the regeneration is a lot different than the golden fire in that the grounding that takes place with the golden, with the regeneration, um, again, because of the geometry, they're the same grounding, but with the regeneration, it is pulling more of a light, your light down into the center of the earth, and connecting with that light of the earth. And then that is expanding throughout the entire earth and, and farther. So to me, that in itself is a whole different grounding in bringing your light into the earth, meeting up with the light of the earth and expanding that throughout the entire planet. So that is just a greater form of grounding. Um, I hope that answers the question. And again, you guys, if I don't answer a question to, you know, to clarify, please do ask again. Um, 
And then the question, do the mini pyramids also connect together in a grid and get upgraded together? Um, so the mini pyramids are not creating a grid as you would think a pyramid does in that pyramids were, you know, they were made in obelisks and all of that were actually created to create grids, which are interconnecting of different pyramids. They're interconnecting energetic lines, geomagnetic lines. So the little pyramids do not create that style of grid, which is a web network connecting to all of the pyramids. But yet they do connect to all the pyramids we create, as do any tool that we make. Because, again, these are the physical anchoring. And the tools that Brenda and I create on that higher dimensional plane, the etheric templates, is where all the, the power and potency of the tools are. So the, the mini pyramids we create up here, they're anchored into the physical right here. So yes, anytime we upgrade the tools, we upgrade the etheric tools, that is automatically put into all the physical tools. So if you think of it as we have the etheric templates, they're actually, um, they're, they're guided, guarded, protected. They are in a pyramid under a dome. There's, there's, you know, those that we work with that are there, you know, holding that space for them to be in existence. And then Brendan and I once in a while come in and work with our guardian of the templates to, um, to do work within those authority templates to, um, you know, to add other, other things along the way. And so we just actually did a huge upgrade to the etheric templates. So anyway, we have the etheric templates and then we have all the physical tools. These create a field. So within this tensor field, this is the antenna, the physical ring that connects to the etheric templates. And then the field that comes out of this or that's emitted out of this, these fields are where you find all of those energies of the etheric templates. So these are just a physical holder of a tensor field. And anytime we update the tools here, they receive the automatic updates. Um, hopefully I explained that well enough. I didn't lose too many along the way. Cause so the etheric templates are something that we just updated on Monday. Um, this past Monday, I believe it was the sixth. We, we actually, we've been waiting for a new ring to come into being for several months now we've been feeling this energy we've been working with this energy we knew that it has something to do with that field of neutrality which you can find in the the mini ascension pyramids and the other ascension pyramids that we that we create there's a field of neutrality that when you come within that field it is stepping you and creation out of the duality creation because when we come here we we create um in that duality out of necessity um and so this neutrality is clearing a lot of the creations that we created in the name of duality in the name of fear necessity survival all of that the ways that we were programmed to and the ways that the earth was holding the space for us to create and so this, this space of neutrality is something that we've been working with that shifts a lot of these huge things within the duality. Um, for Well, we can go down a lot of rabbit holes with that. Um, so this field of neutrality is one thing that we knew was coming through in the new rings. Then there was something else that came through, which was harmony, which is this higher state of harmony. Um, and then there was also that field of universal peace. So within all of the tools this last Monday, there was an upgrade in all of the etheric tools. Doesn't matter when you bought them. Doesn't matter if it's way back when we made the sacred cubit or the galactic or whatever, that these, that these energetic tools are coming through all physical tools that we've ever created. Um, and that's that field of neutrality, the field of universal peace, and this quantum harmony field. And it's huge. 
I have not been able to wear all of my tools for, I don't know, three months now because um, I just couldn't. I could not wear any of the tools. And this is the first time in 10 years that I could not wear my tools. Now, I knew it was only me because everybody else is still testing well for tools. And I've talked to Brenda and it was just me and my journey. And my journey, part of that was the holding the space to bring in these newer templates into all the tools. So as a Monday afternoon, yay, I can wear all my tools again. And it's been fantastic. Super excited about that. And super excited about this template too, because um, it's huge. It's huge. It can shift everything, especially considering how many tools that we have out there in the world that are now emitting this neutrality field and that field of harmony. Um, let's see. Then another question. Uh, is the golden fire and light wand pen a good pendant in case of for EMF protection? Um, Yes, you can wear a golden fire and light wand. The mini wand is perfect because it is the golden fire and it's emitting a field. Granted, that field is not very big, but when you have that field on yours, just like you carry a ring in your pocket or you have any of these tensor tools, you know, specifically that golden fire in your pocket, it's going to be bolstering your field. So then your field is transforming those electromagnetics as it comes in. Um, again, all these tools are training wheels. They're space holders to where we are, you know, going to be the transformers. This is just showing us that, you know, in training us, showing us that we can, as the electromagnetic being that we are, as our heart is that huge electromagnetic generator, that we can be powerful enough to not be affected by this stuff. Um, that's where we're going. That's what we're doing. Um, so yeah, totally. You can wear the wand and it's going to do everything for EMF protection. Uh, can I use my bracelet tools when going out in public to protect from the COVID virus? So viruses are a field of consciousness. These tools are create a high vibration field. We can also override these high vibration fields with our own creation. We've seen several people who have a cell phone tab or a generator in their space, but because they go into such fear and belief that that thing is harming them, it overrides it. That thing harms them. It's, it's a soul path. It's it, well, and it's more than that. It's also, it's also the human path. It's your choice. So for any viruses, we say, keep your vibration up, keep the tools around you. Sure. That's why we're actually having that golden fire generator sale that's been going on and we'll probably leave it going on indefinitely until things settle down because the golden fire generators are something that you can keep around that is one yes it's a high vibration field but two it's also helping people and that's what we want to do is we want to help people get in their heart space release their crap release their fears so i guess the biggest answer to this question that we always tell people about any virus is you got to be in the heart space and not be in fear of it because when you are in fear of anything in creation it becomes creation it becomes your reality and so just being in the heart space expanded knowing that when you are there you are untouchable your light your guided guard are protected so it's working with your mind your heart your light expanding and knowing that you're untouchable. When we've had viruses in the past, viruses go in and change your DNA, and that's something scientifically shown. And some of the channels that I subscribe to, that's one of the things that they're saying too, is that, hey, if you catch it, see it as a beautiful, beneficial thing for changing DNA, restructuring. Uh, take what feels right to you. Um, so 
Christopher asks, do you mean it's coming through the sacred loss and empowerment rings too? Um, yes, so the the updates that we did to the tools with um, that, that quantum heart update, yeah, that's coming through all tools that we've ever created. Um, indeed. Let's see, some other questions here. I made a guy a sphere a while back and had Okay, so yeah, it's interesting. Uh, somebody's talking about how they made a, a Gaia sphere, and you know, when when we first, whenever you make these tools, the Gaia spheres, whenever I've woven that sixth ring into a Gaia sphere, something wild will happen. Sometimes it's a dragon that pops in, or the very first time I had a wayward pop in, a ghost, and I was like, "Whoa, what's going on here?" I was like, "Did I do something wrong?" But it was just because it completed the circuit and it created the field that was so bright. Um, these guys' spheres are really wonderful, wonderful tools. Um, let's see. I bought a generator and dropped it in a low consciousness area and left it. Would it still do its work without me ever coming in contact with it again? Yes, you can totally drop a generator anywhere and leave it and it'll continue to always do its work they're always self-clearing um you know and and of course i love the golden fire generators because nothing slows them down there they expand and they do their work um you know and and they they're they're pretty powerful like a harmony generator a harmony generator when we before we had the golden fire we were working with some guys who were going all over the world and they were burying harmony generators like near CERN, near the Vatican, near Washington, D.C. Um, you know, they put them on all these different grid lines in every place. So there's a lot of these harmony generators all over the world buried in these places. But we're seeing like with the harmony generator, there's one like two blocks from the capital, Washington, D.C., and that's about all the farther out a harmony generator will expand when it is in a dense energy area. Usually this guy has a sphere of influence of five and a half to six miles. But when it's in a super dense area, it can't expand out through that whole field. So like the one downtown Washington, it only goes out for about two blocks in the other direction. Now the golden fire on the other hand that has a two mile sphere of influence Nothing slows it down. No matter where you put it, it's going out almost a mile in every direction. Um, let's see. Are you able to tell us what you saw when you made our Gaia sphere, if if you connect to it? You know, no. And so somebody was asking if I could see what was made with their, that came through with their Gaia sphere when it was connected, when that, last ring was connected to it you know so basically all i meant by when you connect that sixth ring within the gaia sphere that that's when this guy just turns on it, it lights up um so as far as you know and that's only when you are focused on it and you light it up and you're making a single gaia sphere and you're sitting in your space you can see this guy light up and shift now what happens outside is another story like with me i still remember the very first one i made i was on my porch of a house and it wasn't a sacred space i was still learning and you know it not like our studio our studio goes waywards nothing can come into these places um you every once in a while i can look outside the window and see like maybe a wayward or or a spirit passing by, but nothing can come into these spaces. So when when these are created, they're created very much in a sacred space. Um, so somebody was just asking if I could see what came through. So it's not that something comes through the Gaia sphere when we put in that last ring versus it just creates such an expansive bright field that a lot of times something comes in to see what's going on. But within our space that we create now, nothing can come inside to see what's going on that is not in the highest and best good um, because we have a lot of guardians of our space here. Um, question from Marsha. 
Um, Cosmic Sun Disc. Can it be used for earth healing, and which would be the most beneficial, the 25-inch versus the 8.5-inch Cosmic Sun Disc? Um, so the question about using the Sun Disc for earth healing. Um, the Sun Disc is a phenomenal tool um, in that it like let's say let's take the 20 let's say let's take the 26 inch cosmic sun disc the great big one that will sit there and spin so when that large 26 inch sun disc and we put it on a spinner a disco ball spinner and it sits there and spins i see that it totally changes the physical structure of the entire building i mean this is it's it's bringing the frequency and vibration up of physical things um, when we're using the other cosmic sun discs, they are basically like when I used to sleep with the one above my head or even this little one that I'm wearing here. It is working within the physical cells, bringing the physical cells to a higher vibration, bringing in more light into those physical cells and clearing out the dense energy of physical cells. And so, yeah, the cosmic sun disc is great for doing that, that dense energy clearing on the earth. Um, and then the second part of the question was, how long does it take for Brenda to assemble and attune either size? Um, usually when we let Brenda know about a cosmic sun disc or, or the golden fire Taurus that she attunes for a person, it usually takes her, you know, two to three days, depending on, you know, her schedule. She's, she's a busy person and she doesn't do this full time for us. But usually within that three days, she can have it made. And then one of us has to go there and pick it up because she lives, you know, a little ways down the road. So it's a process. So if you order an attuned disc, give it at least five days for us to be able to get it shipped out to you. Um, otherwise, most tools we ship within the same day that, you know, we receive the orders. Um, then the last part of that question, would the mini pyramid be a better choice? So the mini pyramids totally are a better choice for doing just about any kind of huge energy work because the mini pyramids are also expanding into the earth the legs of the pyramid the legs of the pyramid expand down into the earth like our giant pyramid that we first set up here those legs went all the way through the planet and onto the other side so it's like this giant pyramid that goes all the way through the planet with, the, with any of the other pyramids, the Ascension Pyramids, yes, they do expand down into the Earth, but then also because it has the wings of talk in it, which is creating that column of light, which connects down into the Earth, and then that Gaia Sphere, which connects down into the core of Earth, Earth and expands, totally the, 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 the pyramids are, the Ascension Pyramids are the way to go for doing that clearing and raising the frequency and vibration of the physical planet. Um, but then again, as Slim Sperling came through and said in 2011, that every time one of these tools is made, it is raising the light quotient of the planet. So, and then every time we do something like the Trinity Breath, we are raising the light quotient of the planet. We are grounding. We are connecting. We are channels of light. Um, can the Ascension Pyramid be anchored just like a column of light? That's a good question. I've never tried to anchor an Ascension Pyramid someplace. Christopher, please do try it and let me know how that goes. Because I'm sure you can do that. Um, because that's the thing is that you can anchor any kind of an energetic tool someplace but in order for it to stay there you know semi-permanently usually you have to have um, a witness somebody that holds their attention onto that light that you put there and then when somebody is holding their attention onto there then that light will stay so yeah chris i totally feel that if you recreate the ascension pyramid and you visualize it like, let's say, over a cell phone tower. This one back here. As a matter of fact, maybe we'll do that as a meditation here when we're done. Um, let's see. And then somebody's asking, 
I wanted to place light columns at each grid intersection as portals to 3D, 5D. What do you think? Have golden fire, light, and dragon wand, and how would I do this? So with grids, oh yeah, that's right. Somebody was asking me too about talking about grid work. Okay, so this, this question all comes from Kathy about grid work. Um, <clears throat> so the global load, so to just talk a little bit about the grid work and the light anchors. So when we first made the global love and gratitude grid, and again, if you haven't seen that website, that's a fun one. It's global love and gratitude grid.com. And for you of you on the, the, um, the webinar, I will just type that out. Global love. Oops. So anyway, that um, that particular, you know, working with these light grids is pretty phenomenal. If you look up light anchoring um, 101, sorry, light anchoring 3.0. I can't do two things at once. I can't talk and type at the same time. Light anchoring 3.0. If you Google light anchoring 3.0, that will take you to the global love and gratitude grid. And that video light anchoring 3.0, um, it just walks you through another way of anchoring columns of light. Now you can use, totally use the, do I have a mini wand here? Well, darn it, I wasn't as prepared as I thought today. The mini wands, the, the golden fire and light wands, the brass wands that we create, are ones that we use for doing the light anchors. Now, again, they're just tools for us to put our attention onto, um, but we need the attunement to the golden fire, the sacred heart. We need that attunement. And then we also need the, the attunement to the actual golden light rod. Um, so any of the videos like that light anchoring 3.0, it will walk you through the, um, the attunement to the golden fire and to that golden light rod and those are what are used to make those columns of light so it used to be the the old grids like the the giza pyramids the pyramids in egypt um, were one of the grid systems that were set up to hold third density reality in place that's why we created those was to help with this physical reality then there are other grid systems um, like where they create obelisks and these obelisks are created to divert geomagnetic lines that intersect at an obelisk. And then that obelisk will take them and re-divert them. It redirects them. So wherever you see these obelisks that were created, um, they are redirecting geomagnetic lines. That is a part of doing, you know, earth grid work. But a lot of those were used for non-beneficial purposes. So that's why, you know, we've come through and helped to dismantle all of these non-beneficial grids on the planet. You know, like the church grids, you know, all these different grid systems. And so when we are working with these larger geopathic geomagnetic grid systems, the columns of light are a phenomenal way to work with them. We don't need to build a giant obelisk. Or a giant pyramid um, we can just anchor those columns of light so again just go into that light anchoring 3.0 um, it is something that simple and easy to receive those attunements and then start anchoring those columns of light and so when we do those columns of light there's not like they're connected to other columns of light to create a grid like that we were actually working on a tool for our good friend in LA um, who does that 30,000 person meditation. We are going to be working to create these tools that are a quantum gridding tool that we can actually start working with grids on the physical planet with the geomagnetics. Um, so we're, we're still working on creating some some other fun grid tools here soon but for now the the golden fire and light wand or the attunement um, of that light anchor 3.0 let's see K 
Can you suggest which item would be best to gift to a family to energize their whole house? Yes, the, the golden fire generator. This little guy right here, the two and a half inch golden fire generator. We have all of the golden fire generators on sale at this time. Now, it doesn't matter their size. They are still the same power, potency, have the same sphere of influence. So this little guy right here, this two and a half incher, is the most affordable one. Um, these guys are like 66 bucks, but then we have the 11% off right now, as long as all the stuff is going on, we're going to leave these guys on sale. So this small golden fire generator is the one that you can gift to families, to neighborhoods. Um, to raise the frequency and vibration, to do the transforming, dense energy, dense consciousness, bring people into their heart, and it is going to do all the, the EMF transformation as well. Um, and then, James, if I have a golden fire generator, which should be good for Wi-Fi signals and everything in the space, is it much better to have a cell phone tab or Wi-Fi ring on every device, like phone, TV, directly? Um Okay, so here's the deal with having the generators, is the generators, the golden fire generators, are going to clear everything free-floating through the air. So if my Wi-Fi router, which is in the next room over, in my electrical panel, which is on the other side of the building, this is going to clear all of that for me sitting right here because it's clearing everything within this free-floating area. But if I take my cell phone and I don't have a tab on it, and I have it directly in my field right here in my pocket, that generator is not going to be able to directly affect this, you know, because the generator is working throughout that field. So when you bring something directly into your field, then yes, we suggest having a cell phone tab on it. And that's kind of the same with um, <clears throat> working with your electrical panel. Like, let's say if this fruit of life back here, this flower of life was the electrical panel, I would be within that five and a half to six feet of it. And if I had no tools between me and it, I would be directly in its field. If I took my golden fire generator and I sat between the electrical panel and me, then I would have nothing to worry about. Or if I don't spend any time within five and a half to six feet of my electrical panel, it's fine. The generator will cover it. But if you carry your phone, you need a cell phone tab. If you um, are sitting next to your electrical panel or your router is right here in your field, then yeah, use a Wi-Fi ring on your router. Use a golden fire disc on your electrical panel. Otherwise, if you have the distance, golden fire generator is plenty to cover everything. Um, for healing, you have mentioned speaking your intentions into the generator, also using three tools to do this. Um, so, Deborah, I'm not sure what you mean about the three tools. Oh, maybe I do. Um, so, speaking intentions into the generators, <clears throat> we have a harmony generator and we have a golden fire generator. Because of the geometric structure, the Genesa crystal is what this four ring structure sphere is called. This geometry in itself has the ability to hold, amplify, and broadcast intentions. So the harmony generators and the 222s, um, you can voice your intentions into them. And then when you do, it will hold, amplify, and broadcast those intentions. So that's simply how you do those. When you order one of these, you get the little instruction half sheet of paper that basically just says how to voice your intentions in there. It's just, as the Elder's Three channel, it's a touch of voice and intention, put it in there, it broadcasts it. The Golden Fire will do that to an extent. Because the golden fire is a higher connecting tool, it's it works in a whole different bandwidth of frequency. The golden fire will not take your base intentions from the perception of the human to be able to put in there and amplify them out exactly how you see them. This is working with your soul. So you can voice your intention in here, 
Um, but it will, but your soul will come through and transform what is not in your soul's highest and best. This is working with the human perception of putting in your intentions, amplifying those out, though it won't amplify and send out things that are non-beneficial, you know, to you. But the golden fire generator is one that you can put in those intentions. And if it's in alignment with your soul, it will hold and amplify those intentions that are in alignment with the soul. Um, hopefully I answered that one okay. Um, let's see. Do we need one golden fire generator per story of the home? No, actually, the golden fire generator will go out three uh, seven eighths of a mile, a little bit over now, almost one mile in every direction. You cannot contain the field of a golden fire generator. You can put it in a Faraday cage and it's still doing its work. You can encase it in lead. You can bury it three quarters of a mile in the earth. It's going to go through everything. It is a quantum field. So one generator will cover your entire neighborhood, no matter where in your home you put the generator. It's going to expand and, and cover everything. Um, let's see. And then here's a comment from Lisa. Four times tornadoes bearing down on the radar screen. I went outside with the wand, erected a dome of light, wand pointing at radar, concentrating on breaking up and dispersing the storm's concentration. Last night, winds came. I grabbed the wand, erected a protective dome of light, instantly quieted down. Yes, Lisa, totally. I mean, we we see this. We see that. Um, I know a 12-year-old girl who can move clouds. I mean, this is real stuff. We can affect the physical reality. We can affect storms um, through consciousness, through the sacred space of the heart. The wand is a tool to assist us in doing that. Um, you know, and Slim used to talk, Slim Sperling, the original creators of the tools, he would take a giant ring and he would go out and lasso tornadoes. That was one of the things that he was well known for, is pointing that ring in a tornado and actually being able to steer it, to be able to move it out of the way. Um, we have a lot of people who do radionics that have maps and they put their tools on, you know, on a map to do the to do the energy work kind of like what lisa did here with um you know working with both the radar and being able to visualize that storm with the wand on the radar and dispersing it and then also putting up those protective bubbles so that's another thing i mean we have a friend who had a fire um down in the forest that they lived in they put a bubble around their home and yep it's exactly where the fire burnt up to um, without any other help. I mean, it's, it's pretty flipping amazing what we can do with consciousness work when we're in the heart space. Look at what we've created out of fear, survival, and necessity in this world. Think of what we can create from the heart space with consciousness. It's huge. Um, that's why going into your heart space when you are a creator and we are being given more opportunities to be creators. And it's really fun, Lisa, when you can actually, you know, when you get that verification of it, because then your mind is all like, oh, wow, yeah, this is real. I can do this. There are tangible things that occur when I use my consciousness work. That's flipping beautiful. Um, Somebody is asking here, Christopher, can the golden fire rings create a torsion field between them? If not, can they be upgraded to? Oh, so hold on just a moment. We, several years ago, we created a, a new ring called the Torsion Ring. And that came from some good friends of mine, Marty Lucas and some others who um, we work with, to where we use the Harmony Ring and we, we anchored in this new Torsion Ring. And we were selling a Torsion Ring for a little while until we were able to anchor that whole thing into all the templates. But basically what that was, was we would, you would take two of those rings and yes, Chris, this will work with the golden fire as well as any of the harmonies is that you can hold these rings barely apart and you can start to create this field of energy between them. It's like a ball of energy. Um, to me, I can feel it a lot more on the harmony rings than the golden fire 
but with your intention, yes, you can totally create that field. And so you start to create this larger field. And then once you create that larger bubble, you can actually, you know, place that around objects like around the camera, you know, and around yourself, around a crystal, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, oops. So going back to chat here and seeing. Um, so we might be just about done here, you guys. I think we we could do a a group meditation here and use the pyramid. Um, and let's see, because yeah, there's a couple people asking about doing a group meditation. And I do have to get off here within the eight minutes. Um, we can only do an hour long webinar today. We actually moved our Easter family celebration today. Since it's nice out, we're going to go out in Brenda's pasture and climb on the round hay bales and fly kites and do our family thing today. So I, I get, everybody's waiting out in the car for me. So we're going to finish up here. So this meditation that we're going to do, we should use the pyramid and see if we can anchor that pyramid into the physical like Chris was talking. I think that's a fantastic idea. So I think that, um, you know, usually when we are doing any kind of high level energy work like that, we, we don't want to take on things like, Hey, let's put this over the Vatican or let's put this over Washington or let's clear out the coronavirus or whatever because so many of these things that exist within the duality matrix are there in the highest and best good granted any of the work that we do from the heart space in this work that we do on a soul level we we can't interfere with things that are part of a greater context but we can still bring light to them um so in, and then too when we start to try to take on something of that magnitude and that nature we end up going back into the head again because truly when we are in the heart space with these things um we nothing none of that stuff really matters it's it's um it becomes a moot point because when we're in the heart space it changes our perception and when we are within the heart space we see everything as divine just like when we cleared all the church grids on the planet um, we could not clear the vatican because it was still playing a role in duality because a lot of people still needed that duality in order for them to you know for their soul's journey and so the point of all that is, is let's, um, let's not do anything really big and crazy with this pyramid. Let's do something local. So like, I feel like a lot of you might want to put this into like your hospital locally or your home or your city council. Let's go something, nah, not even city council. Let's stay out of the political realms. Let's stay within our own selves because like anything that we do, we take care of ourselves first, then our family, then we expand it into the world. That's the way we operate. So if you feel comfortable with expanding outside of your home, you can do that. But for now, let's put it either in our home or in a local hospital. Let's do those two either one so we're going to go through the meditation as soon as this meditation is finished i'm going to sign off and there we go so here's the pyramid all right so again just closing your eyes going right to your physical heart, your light within your heart. We're going to connect that with the light of the earth. So either expand your light down to connect to the light of the earth 
or breathe in that light of the earth to your heart, either one. Connecting to that heart of the earth. Good. Now we're connect to source, soul, creator, God. Connecting our light to that light of creation. Another breath, bringing it all together within you and expanding it out into all. It's almost like you're a column of light, but it's more like you are the center of a troidal field, the center of the Taurus. The zero point space is your heart. And out of your heart flows upwards in a funnel the light of creation, the light of the earth, and the light of you. It flows downwards from that funnel, from that zero point of creation of your heart. It's the light of the earth, it's the light of source, it's the light of you. Now then imagine that being right in the center of this pyramid. You, with your light, with your zero point space of creation, with all that light flowing both in and flowing out at the same time. Also imagine that there's that column of light within the heart. It goes straight down into the earth and it goes straight up to source creation, a straight single column of light. That is the light anchor. And within this space, that pyramid is holding that space of neutrality, it's holding that space of universal peace, it's holding that space of harmony. Now then, imagine you, that pyramid, all that light, that entire light structure that we created. Imagine that in your home or in that hospital or where it is that you feel drawn to. Imagine it there while you are in that space where it is grounding into the earth, it is holding the space for it there and it is connecting. That is the light anchor. It is holding it in space. Now then, Again, focusing on the heart and just allowing, letting that become soft. Because that field of neutrality, that field of harmony, that field of universal peace, it is a soft energy. It is not hard. Allowing that to expand and flow into that space. It doesn't push. It encompasses. It saturates. It doesn't push. It transforms. All souls that step within that field, it transforms. It connects. See every soul that steps within that field, look at their heart, see their light within the heart. Visualize their light grounded into earth, connected to source soul creation and witness them expand. Just holding the space. Now going back to that center column of light that is still there, that is holding this space, this field into place, this soft, beautiful field. Awesome. Thank you all for being here.